Welcome to Finance with Avery. In this video, I want to give a detailed overview of my top five growth stocks for long term gains. Now, this is not financial advice. This isn't saying like, hey, these stocks are going to 10x in 10 days or 200 percent in 200 seconds or get rich quick with these stocks or anything like that. No, nothing like that with this right here. This list. This is what I personally think are some of the best growth stocks, not the only growth stocks. Definitely not. There's a ton of growth stocks out there, ton of value stocks, ton of different kind of stocks. You know that for sure. I mean, if you know about investing, you you know there's a wide range there's not just like a couple of these kind of stocks and a couple of these kind of stocks typically but for me personally this is what i have my top five favorite growth stocks for just 2023 and beyond not just really this year i plan on holding these for a long term now some of these i'll go ahead and say i do own some of these and i'll tell you specifically which ones i'm owning right now what i'm up in and what i'm down in them i'll show it on the screen and which ones i'm planning on owning what i'm waiting for you know anything like that i'm going to get into detail with all of that and you know so this list is you know for me personally and this could be research for you if these companies stick out and you're like oh that sounds interesting i might want to invest in that this is part of your research you know do more research see if you really want to own this stock if you already own it this could still be part of your research like oh yeah that's a good reason why i still want to own this or why i want to maybe sell this or anything like that so this is all financial education financial information not financial advice and let's get into it right here the top five growth stocks for 2023 and beyond because that's me. I'm a long-term investor for the most part, and that's what I do. I do some swing trades here and there, you know, I watch the charts, you know, something going like that. Look at the RSI, the relative strength index, different things like that, and trade off of that. But overall, for the most part, I'm a long-term investor, and I invest in value stocks and growth stocks, a mix of them there. I've been sometimes heavy on value, sometimes heavy on growth. Usually, I'm more heavy on value. I play a little bit more safe. I like dividends and things like that. So, and with this list right here, none of these stocks have dividends, which is it's kind of hard for me. I must admit sometimes it's not having a stock that doesn't have a dividend. One of them that I was about to put on this list did have a dividend. Full disclosure, it was Taiwan Semiconductor, TSM. It does pay a dividend, but it's in the growth sector. It's in the semiconductor sector, which is a sector that those companies that stay on top, they have to spend a lot of money. And now Taiwan Semiconductor, they have a lot of money to spend. They make a lot of money. They're the number one semiconductor company in the world. And they got that way for a reason because they spend a lot of money and they have a lot of innovation, a lot of smart people at that company for sure, great management. You know, from what I know about them, I don't know a ton about Taiwan, Taiwan Semiconductor, but I do know they almost made this list. But, you know, that's all I'll say about that. But that's what I was going to say. That was one stock that did pay a dividend that almost made my list, but it didn't. So, you know, that's not to say it's not a growth stock. And you know, that's something I'm still actually looking. I did own Taiwan Semi back in the 60s, 70s. Warren Buffett got in it. I was like, whoa, and like validation. Like, yeah, I'm smart. Warren Buffett got in the stock after I did. And then he sold out of it Yeah, after I sold out of it because I sold out of it. <laughs> For a little bit of a profit, but he sold out of it because of, you know, things going on with Taiwan and China and things like that. Said it was a great company still, but, you know, didn't want to be in it because of that. Totally understandable. I kind of did the same way because it's just, it's a risk that I didn't want to take on right now. But anyways, enough about that <laughs> tangent. I've been known definitely going financial tangents, all kind of tangents. But yeah, now in this top five list right here, and they're not in any kind of order, not saying, you know, number one is going to grow the most or anything like that or any, nothing like that. Now in this top five list right here, I got two financial companies, a clothing company, an electric vehicle company, and a healthcare company. Now all of those companies do more, so to speak, than that. They're not just that. They have a wide range of things. That's part of the reason why I like them. You know, they get really into detail in those sectors. It's not just like a bland, oh, we're just a bank or we're just a clothing company. There's other things going on right there, but we'll get into the list right here. Let me not go on another tangent. All right, let's jump into the top five growth stocks right here for me. And starting with number five, New Holdings, which New Holdings provides digital banking platform and digital financial services in Brazil, Mexico, Colombia, and internationally. New Holdings, new stock right here. This is a financial company right here, a behemoth that's growing and growing right now overseas, internationally in Brazil, South America, for sure. And this is a company actually Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway have a position in. They just went public recently, not that long ago. For New Holdings right here, it stated that their earnings are forecasted to grow 47.69% this year. So as you see right here, it has excellent growth potential with a worrying balance sheet is what the Snowflake analysis says. And it stated right here that New Holdings is forecasted to grow earnings and revenue by 47.7% and 29% and that their EPS earnings per share is expected to grow by 1.6%. Return on equity is forecasted to be 22.3% in three years. And you just see it just going up exponentially because they have been growing exponentially with their revenue. And I'm going to jump to that too as well. You see it right here in this chart right here. Past performance, not that good. They don't have a lot of past performance. This is a newer public company, you know, right here. So they don't have a 
lot of history to be really basing their past performance on. That's one thing that is kind of hard to research and examine with some growth stocks that are newer. You know, you can't really look at past performance. For many companies, when you're looking at investing in them or holding them or selling them, you can look at like past 10 years of data and everything. You want to look at the earnings, the um, expenses, the revenue, the earnings per share, you know, different things like that to kind of get an idea of where the company's headed and things like that. But with a newer company, it's harder to do that. You really have to look at future growth prospects, what they're doing currently, you know. So with this one, you know, there's not much to go on the past performance. Financial health, not that much to go on as well. Right here, no dividend. Management, high number of new directors is stated. So there, there are some kind of red flags, so to speak, with new holdings. And you, the new website right here for New Bank. You got their credit card right there with MasterCard. You see that logo, very clean, very nice website. New bank digital account, the credit card, you got life insurance, mobile insurance, personal loans, and investment. So they have several products. That's what I was kind of meaning. You know, it's kind of having a blank statement saying, hey, new is a financial company. It's like, yeah, they're a financial company. They have various financial avenues going on right here. And definitely the next company I'm gonna get into that's on this list as well. But before we get to that, more about new bank right here. So yeah, the website right here, you go to a very clean, very nice website. And let's jump over to how they've been performing. So, you know, just past month, up 34.36%, you know, past three months, 30.86%. And, you know, like I said, this company hasn't been around that long. So max lifetime performance, they're down 30.12%. You know, it started out around nine, $10 a share. So, you know, they're at $6.53 a share right now as of the recording of this video. So yeah, it is down overall, but recently this past year, year to date, year to date, this stock is up 60.44%. So yeah, and a lot of times you may look at that, you may say, oh, I missed out on it. And yeah, you missed out on it. Yeah, I missed out on part of it. However, let me check something here because I own, so yeah, I'm currently up 27.14% on this stock. My average price is $5.14. So yeah, definitely up. I didn't catch that huge run up right there, but I'm up right now from where I'm at. And this is a stock I definitely wanna add more to my position because I don't have a large position in this at all. Um, so I definitely want to add to this and, you know, I may even add around a $6 mark. It's just running up every day. I mean, look at this past month since, you know, it hasn't seen the under $5 in over a month, right? About a month, right? Since May, it just kind of took off. Boom. Like, you know, I really liked my initially started my position in this. Of course, I had it back in the IPO. Like I said, I think I ended up getting out of it around what I got it at four or at a loss or something. Kind of cut it short because I started kind of dwindling down. I was like, let me get out of this stock. But I initially started my position. First, when I got back into this stock on April 17th, it was at $4.57. So yeah, and I've just been adding a little bit since then. I want to add more. But let's jump into the financials here. Right now, new holdings, no PE earnings, no price per earnings, no PE right here because it's not profitable. Earnings per share is negative 0.04. You see right there. So Let's look at the financials here though. Look at this growth. It is pretty awesome. Look at that. So 2019, 612 million. 2020, 737 million. 2021, 1.7 billion, 130%. Then 2022, 4.79 billion revenue, 182% gain growth year over year. These numbers are ridiculous. I mean, like, look at that. 2018 started 318 million dollars revenue 2020 four years later 4.79 billion dollars wow so of course you got gross profit look at that gross profit increasing 152 percent 144 percent you know and of course that's not guaranteed to grow three digits you know every year that's it eventually becomes unattainable you know companies get so big you know you can't do that like amazon and google you know those companies that are still growing and doing great you know and everything like that and still you know can post double digit you know percentage gains and things like that three digits like and sometimes it's harder for them to even get double digits you know single digits here and there. i think apple you know growth like that so any until a new product comes out or something you know new refresh cycle or service or something like that you may get those double digits in those huge companies like that but sometimes it's like high single digits but with these growth stocks they can really grow like that but one reason they're able to grow like that is because they spend a lot of money investing in that company to grow because look at those operating expenses operating expenses are growing up as well you see those triple digit percentages in that so yeah, this company is growing and it's growing expenses, but it's also growing at revenue very nicely. Gross profit growing very nicely right there. So top ownership right here in this company, you got Galileo, Bally Gifford, Technology Crossover, you got Berkshire Hathaway right there. There you go at 2.28% ownership right there, which is 0.16% of their portfolio, because vast portfolio right there. JP Morgan, 0.05% of their portfolio, but they own 1.55%. Artisan Partners, Morgan Stanley right there, Invesco, you know, the ETFs right there. You got 
the DT World Price. So you got the big players in here, big names in there. And you got some lesser known names in there as well for the investors of this company. Because it's an international company, so it hasn't really taken hold of, I would so to speak, in the U.S. as much as far as like being known and everything like that in the investment community. And I'm really interested and curious to see how this company grows, especially with all the financial turmoil that's going on in the States, you know, and there's some things going on in South America that aren't financially sound and financially stable. So it has to meet with that. And also what's going on in the States matter, you know, so there's different challenges definitely ahead for a new holdings, but also a lot of levels of opportunity, a lot of areas of opportunity and growth for new holdings as well. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this company grows and how fast they grow and where they grow and different things like that. Because you see, look at that revenue in, in their newest earnings right there. New holdings beat on the top and bottom line revenue of 1.62 billion exceeded consensus of 1.55 billion. It's, it's astounding. So yeah, it's great. It's really neat to see. New holdings in you analyst ratings right here. We've got only four ratings right here, but it's a strong buy. You got three buys and one hold. Average 12 month forecast price target of $7.63%, which is around 17% upside right now. Highest price target of $10. Lowest price target of $5.50. So that is number five right here on my list, new holdings. Let's get on to number four. Number four on the list is SoFi. SoFi is a mobile first service that provides a suite of financial products that includes student loan refinancing, mortgages, personal loans, credit card, investing, and banking through their mobile app and desktop interfaces. Now, currently, yes, this is a stock that I do own as well. I'm currently up like 6.2% on it with the average cost of $4.71. This is one I definitely want to add more to because it is a small position that I have. And I'm hoping, you know, that it kind of stays in this area for a while, you know, even below $5. Right now, I think it's right at around $5 right now. It's trading today while I'm recording this video. But this is an area of accumulation that for me personally, you know, like I said, not financial advice. And even the CEO has been accumulating to show strength, to show that it's undervalued. And we'll get to that in the later part of this video right here. I'll show the insider buying right there. However, you know, that not everybody's buying insider. So we're not just saying like, not just saying like everybody's buying as insider, just the CEO, which is, you know, kind of an important position. But anyways, so yeah, own this one right here. And for SoFi, the earnings are forecasted to grow 66.28% per year right here. That is a huge growth right there. But one of the issues with SoFi is the shareholder dilution. That's been one of the issues kind of weighing down on the stock. Now, this company hasn't been public for that long either. They just went public the last couple of years right here. So, but one way they pretty much, you know, pay their, you know, employees, the top directors and things like that, it through shares, through stock shares, you know, issuing shares like that. So that it kind of dilutes when a company does that, when they issue more shares, when they pay their companies with shares of stock and everything like that, that puts more shares on the market, which dilutes shareholders. If you already own the stock, like for example, if you own 10 shares of a stock and there's only 100 shares trading, okay, well, you own 10% of that stock, right? Well, now let's say they issued 100 more shares and now there's 200 shares of the company, but you still just own those 10 shares. Well, you don't own 10% of the company anymore. You own 5% of the company, just like that. You didn't do anything. You just held. So, and that, you know, makes your stock what you have worth less because there's more shares out there. So that's shareholder dilution just overall real basic, but it happens, you know, different than that because just, of course, the share amounts are different and things like that and the rate and things like that playing into account and where there's trading at at the current moment, you know, where the stock is trading at when that happens and vice versa and things like that. So, but overall shareholder dilution, one thing holding down the stock right there. And it's been noted with this stock right here. If you've done research on it, you've probably heard of that. If you continue to do research on it, you'll hear about that. But future growth of this stock, let's check this out right here. It's checking four out of six of the criteria on this website right here. And they say SoFi is forecasted to grow earnings in revenue by 66.3% and 18.8%. EPS earnings per share is expected to grow by 66.6% and return on equity is forecasted to be 4% in three years right here. Future growth is one thing that is looking pretty nice right here with SoFi. You look at the chart right here, just right here. We know we're in 2023, so it's already been growing like this and it's looking to forecast it to be, continues to be growing right here. And you know, you've got the future growth, analyst future growth forecast right here compared to the industry, compared to the market. I mean, look at that, 66.3%. The industry, finance industry in general, 10.1%. Market, 14.9%. So very vast right there with that versus the market versus the savings rate and past performance not going to be that great i'll tell you right now yeah i thought so because there's not a lot of past performance to go based off of however we will get to their growth and you will see how this company has definitely been growing financially and of course costs have been going up you know for sure as well so it's definitely something to check their financial health you know they only check two to four marks right here they have a total shareholder equity 
5.6 billion total debt 6.2 billion which brings that debt to equity ratio to 110.8 percent so that is the issue right there total assets and liabilities 22.5 billion and 16.9 billion respectively so that you know that's you know you got some you got some things that look nice about this company some things look uh you know short-term liabilities long-term liabilities their short-term assets exceed their short-term liabilities and their short-term assets exceed their long-term liabilities. So those are two good check marks right there to have. And let's get, they don't pay a dividend and management, they have a stellar management team. I'll tell you that just, and I won't deep dive into these companies too much because this isn't just the SoFi group. And I didn't do this for new because I don't really know much about their management team. So, but SoFi I do because I've been in this stock longer than let me try to think of the other stocks on this list. Yeah, longer than any of the other stocks in this list right here. And so this is when I've done more research on in general. And, I've, and I'm in the financial field myself, personally. I mean, yeah, I have a finance channel on YouTube, of course. And also my degrees in finance, you know. So I've looked at the background of some of these. You know, Goldman Sachs, you have different big companies, big banks. that Some of these executives on this team come from right here, Anthony Noto. And let's jump over to their website here. Look at this website. I mean, there's a lot that SoFi does right here. And I know I said at the beginning of their um, ranking right there when I um, talked about SoFi, you know, personal loans, banking, credit score insights, you know, student loan refinancing, mortgage loans, credit cards, savings account, checking account, you know, and they offer a high APY compared to the industry on the higher end, 4.20% currently right now. And I've done videos on SoFi bank accounts before because it is a bank account that I like. I personally use myself and the app is very nice the user interface is great you know they've done a great job designing and just implementing features and growing this app and growing their online presence and just their company themselves you know offering new products it's like a, they want to be that all-in-one one-stop shop for your finances and i can see that you can have a loan through them, a credit card through them checking account savings account and you know that's the basis for you know your financial upbringing your financial realm right there you know so it is easy to have like a lot of things going on with SoFi and not really have to deal with anybody else really neat you can see all the different features and everything like that you can check out the website because that's part of doing the research too not just looking at you know the numbers and the balance sheet and the income statement that's very important as well definitely very important but you want to actually check out the company themselves how do they look what's going on with them you know if they have a physical presence check out the store see what's going on there that's what I do for example for Target one of my top stocks that I own that I like to own and continue to try to hold, own and hold is I check out the store and you know because I you shop there but also just to kind of check it out see what's going on in different targets and stuff when i'm in different cities and everything but let's jump over to the how the stock has been performing here you know for the month down 18 percent around right there for the three months down 24 percent year to date up about 8.13 percent max for their lifetime down 52.43 percent so yeah you see that started out around ten dollars right there jumped up to around $25, went down around 20, you know, bounced around right there. And it's been trading single digits since, gosh, when is this? Uh, 2022, like March, 2022, all throughout 2022. And now we're in 2023. You know, this stock has been in a single digit room and just kind of down, bounced up a little bit and down again right now. Yeah, we're under $5 right now recording this video I know it was right around five when I started it. let's look at the financials right here look at this growth 2018 you got 269 million revenue 2019 uh, 442 million 64.31 percent growth year over year in that year and then you jump up to 565 million 27 percent 2021 984 million 74 percent growth in revenue and then 2022 1.57 billion 59.77 percent year over year growth for the revenue look at that growth it looks nice right here for some reason they don't have the gross profit right here or some of the operating income listed right here they got the net profit you see that kind of bouncing around right there and that diluted earnings per share so not a lot of you know details right here on msn right here and money they usually have kind of more details filled in here but net profits kind of yeah but let's jump over to their cash flow right here because cash flow has kind of been man right here you see it kind of bouncing around this company currently right now is not profitable they are heading towards that way though it looks like in some areas for sure so it's definitely one of those companies that's like that's the reason one of the reason why it's been held down not being picked up as much and the stock is kind of taking a beating because they're not profitable yet and in this moment we're in in overall macroeconomics you know not being profitable is not a good thing especially with the fed fund rate being up and companies that have to borrow to grow you know they're having to borrow at a higher rate right now to grow so not a really 
friendly environment for growth companies that have to borrow basically with that Fed funds rate going up. So it is taking a hit with a lot of growth stocks. However, you know, 2023, you know, first part of the second part of this quarter has been like on the tear with some growth stocks, you know, like big ones, you know, Nvidia, even Tesla's up, even though they're down right now. Spoiler alert, they're on this list as well. Kind of a iffy moments going on with growth stocks. Some are up nicely, some are taking a beating, but it's all kind of different reasons. But we're going to get into also investors in this company, the top shareholders in this company. And right here, you see total ownership at 7.39%, the Vanguard Group. Vanguard is massive. You've heard of Vanguard, I'm sure. If you haven't, they hold a ton of ETFs. If you have a retirement portfolio somewhere or something like that, there's a good chance there's a Vanguard ETF in it. And if not, I mean, it's probably Fidelity. He's like, Fidelity or Vanguard, you know, you've got one of those ETFs in there probably. But yeah, so, and probably maybe even both. But so, Vanguard, huge company right there, 7.39%, which is only 0.01% of their portfolio though, because they're massive. And then you have BlackRock, huge company as well, with 3.81% ownership of SoFi, barely anything of their portfolio though. And then you have Silver Lake, State Street, another one, big ETFs, and Morgan Stanley. You know, definitely some big companies here, some I haven't heard of. Charles Schwab, heard of that, of course, and JP Morgan Chase. So yeah, they've got some big time ownership in here. And we want to also, I want to check this out as well is i know i talked about the insider trading right here what's going on with that let's get over to that there's so many different websites you can check out with things but some of them have it i like the way they have it mapped out look at the ceo anthony nodo buying 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 his stock of his company right here showing strength showing that he thinks is undervalued showing strength in the company this is what this tells me this is what it tells a lot of investors and when you get insider buying like this especially at this level we have ceos and cfos buying stock in the company that usually means one thing that they think is going up or they want to show strength they think it's undervalued they think it's underpriced they think it's going up basically you know that's what that's showing when when people sell when insiders sell when ceos cfos sell it can be of various reasons you know because they get grants they get awarded stock you know maybe they have too much maybe they want to invest in something else maybe they want to buy a new house you know maybe they want to go on a nice vacation you know insiders sell for various reasons but insiders typically buy for like one main reason, two main reasons, you know, they think the stocks go up, they think it's underpriced, you know, different things like that. They want to show strength in the company because they, they see the financials. They know what's going on more than we do, what's going on in the company. They're buying in the company. That's, you know, that's a nice thing. So Anthony Noto, you got to go to show more. This guy has been buying, this, this man has been buying, you know, you got a couple others right there. Harvey Schwartz, you got some selling going on for sure. You know, I'm not overlooking that. Okay. General counsel, company secretary. So yeah, you got some people selling for sure, but you got this guy right here. Anthony J. Noto, Chief Executive Officer, Director, showing strength, showing strength, buying at, and you see the price he's been buying at, $4.67, $5.12. Look at the amount of shares as well, $50,000 at $4.73, $5. He's, he's been buying around his $5, you know, $4 mark for sure, and even, you know, gosh, really, definitely under 5 you know, with the amount that he's bought, well, he's definitely bought a lot of buff as well. You know, six and seven dollars. Gonna say maybe he's had a huge gain already with this just being at five dollars a share. But no, so yeah, definitely a lot of um, buying going on right there from Anthony Noto. If you're in the company, if you're holding the stock, if you're buying the stock, that's something you definitely like to see. So that's definitely something to notate here. Anthony Noto, CEO, the insider buy. Not the only reason to buy the company, and not the only reason why it made my list of top five growth stocks at all. But you see the future growth prospects, the way the company's been growing, and the actual company themselves. You know, and and yes, yeah, it's, it's a competitive sector for sure, but. They're able to grab this market share. What's going on right now? A lot of people are leaving these smaller banks, these regional banks, and going to the bigger banks. Which yeah, the bigger banks include like Bank of America, J.P. Morgan. They got some big competition. Those companies are invested in SoFi as well. So it's you know <laughs> you got to take it that. And this is I'm kind of shocked honestly that somebody hasn't even tried to buy SoFi. I mean, they may have tried to happen, and maybe I don't know about it, or maybe it's just not in the news, you know. But this will seem like a takeover target for sure with this company because they're doing great things. 4.6 billion in market cap. So, in in just just for example, BAC is Bank of America. Number two, as far as like the biggest banks in the United States, market cap of 224 billion. So yeah, you see how much vast that is. And uh, JPM, JP Morgan Chase, yeah, at market cap of 404 billion. So yeah, massive bank. SoFi is definitely on the smaller end as far as like the banks and size, but they have been growing and growing, and you know. They're down there at that 52-week range right there. 
if four dollars and 24 cents a low they're four dollars and 96 cents right now analysts buy recommendations you know you see the, the buy and there's some selling going on as well so it is very interesting to see what's going to go on with this stock i'm very much looking forward to it and want to add more of it to it my personal portfolio but analyst forecast for sofi ticker symbol sofi has a moderate buy with 13 ratings nine buys four holes zero sales Average 12 months target forecast price right there is $7.65, 55% upside around that. Highest price target of $10, lowest price target of $5. So currently trading below that lowest price target right now. Like I said, SoFi has been around $5 right now. And as of this recording of this part of this video, it's at closed at $4.93 right there. But that is number four on the list right there is SoFi. Coming in at number three on my list is FIGS, ticker symbol F-I-G-S. FIGS is a direct-to-consumer healthcare apparel and lifestyle company in the United States. They sell scrubs, but more than that, they've been definitely diversifying their products where they're offering more products. And I'll show you the website here soon, but let's get to this growth right here because this is very nice and their balance sheet as you see right there the snowflake analysis mentions it right there flawless balance sheet with reasonable growth potential and by balance sheet i'm just going ahead and spoil i gotta tell you this company has zero debt and i'll show you <laughs> it is it's just great i mean like seriously could you Companies typically hold debt, and sometimes debt can be used for good things. Of course, definitely. You definitely don't want to have too much debt in general. I mean, this isn't a personal analysis, but I many people can use debt for good things. You know, there's good debt, bad debt, things like that. I won't dive into that. This is a growth stock company video. So, yeah, but figs, you know, they don't have any debt, but we'll get into that right here. But I know I'm going to go on a tangent. I'm not, I promise. Okay, look, and they state right here earnings are forecasted to grow 37.29% per year. And look at that. Yes. They became profitable this year. This is like the, the oh, moment for a growth stock for a new company. They just went public just a couple years ago. Another company that just went public recently and they became profitable. They've been operating for a while for sure. You know, Figs isn't a new company. The scrubs have been around for a while. And right now, even for Figs, they're stating on this website right here that they're trading at 19.8% below their estimate of its fair value. So, and I'm not saying like, oh, that means just buy right now. Like I said, more research and everything like that. Figs is a company I have been in before and I've been in and out of this company just a little bit. I haven't like been trading it really that much. And right here, according to this website right here, Figs is trading at 19.8% below their estimate of its fair value. So that is definitely nice to see as well. They're trading around $8 a share, 808 a share right there, last price. And I've been in this stock and then I'm not, I'm not currently in it right now, but I'm definitely wanting to get in it soon. And honestly, like um, Friday before closing, I meant to put in an order when it was around seven dollars and when it dipped below eight and i was like you know what i don't think it's going to be below eight for the rest of the day you know or something and i'm not trading it like you know trying to swing trade it or day trade or anything like that but i just wanted to start a new position in it and like i said when i start a position in a company i don't go all in definitely not i never do that i go in a little bit at a time you know and sometimes i'll set certain price targets if it doesn't hit that for the day oh well you know if it does hit there for a day oh well sometimes i'll just throw in an order just like i want to get more of this company right here in this area you know just today when i'm starting a position sometimes i do that or you know i usually always set limits I I don't ever really leave it up to market price just in case but i always set limit orders when i'm buying um, and selling stocks typically but anyways yeah so figs let's get down to their future growth right here future growth criteria they check four out of six right here on this right here because their growth rate 37.3 percent eps growth rate 36.3 percent they definitely have some great things going on in the growth space right here and that's why they meet my growth space you know my criteria right here for this growth stock list right here because figs is forecasted to grow earnings and revenue by 37.3 percent and 9.4 percent EPS earnings per share is expected to grow by 36.3% and return on equity is forecasted to be 7.7% in three years. So you see that growth, that double digit growth is great. That's what you want to see in a company like this. That's newer and, and profitable and no debt. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, for sure. Look at that growth revenue forecast right there. Revenue just going up right there a little bit on the earnings because you know costs and still going to be an issue with companies you know their margins are actually pretty nice too i don't see if they show them on this website i use several different websites when i'm researching and evaluating stocks and everything but they do have nice margins i'm not sure if it's on this website it's probably on here somewhere but i use i'll go i'll show you that in a moment but yeah so look at that right there earnings versus savings rate nice earnings versus market nice high growth earnings revenue versus market nice and in high growth revenue their standard re fixed revenue is forecasted to grow slower than 20 percent per year 9.4 percent so that's their standing right there but you see the revenue growing up here right here and, and the analyst forecast right here for the company 37.3 percent compared to the industry at 18.5 the market in general at 14.9 and the revenue is expected to beat the market as well but you see right here where they said the fixed revenue is expected to um it's forecasted to grow slower to 20 percent per year 9.4 percent 
well, look at that. The industry is that is expected 8.4%. The market in general is 7.8%. That's the thing right here going on because the macroeconomic environment and, you know, what's going on in the economy, you, you, I'm sure you know what's going to come. If you're watching this video, you definitely are somewhat aware of what's going on in the economy and inflation and Fed funds rate and, you know, so it's definitely a lot of things hang in the balance with all these stocks. Even if it's a growth stock and it's growing revenue, it can be hit by macroeconomic conditions. You know, if something goes on, it's going to dip down, you know, just like when COVID struck, you know, a couple of years ago. Companies that were doing great, you know, everybody got hit. You know, I don't, I'm sure there's probably, I'm sure there's some stocks I don't know of that didn't get really affected that much. Even companies that really didn't get affected, yeah, they took over and, and that growth was like almost a month or so after, like immediately going up, like, hey, this doesn't affect us more, or hey, we're getting more growth, we're getting more revenue. Different things like that were happening, especially when the economy started to open back up and people start going back out. So, yeah. Anyway, so what I'm basically saying is that macroeconomic conditions can affect a stock no matter how great that stock is or bad, vice versa, you know. So, the stock could not be that great, but hey, the market's just going wild going up and it may go up with it as well and vice versa. So that's what's going on with that. But figs definitely has some great things going on. The past performance, there's not much for the past performance because like I said, this company just went public not that long ago, a couple years ago. So it's not much to really base this off. You know, there's not a lot of data out because when a company is not, you know, public right there, they don't have to disclose, you know, their numbers like that. So, you know, and the past performance, so there's not much going on right there. They did beat analyst expectations for their revenue. They did beat earnings per share and revenue expectations in the first quarter of 2023. So that's a green check mark. So past performance is starting to be a great thing. Like I say, turning profitable. That's part of their past performance now. So that's great. And let's get down here. Yes, six out of six check marks on their criteria right here because of this amazing thing right here. Zero percent debt to equity ratio because they have zero debt. Figs has a total shareholder equity of 320 million and total debt of zero, which brings its debt to equity ratio to zero percent. Its total assets and liabilities are 388.1 million and 67.9 million. So check this out as well, because zero debt, like this, this is awesome. Okay, that's awesome. Got that out of the way. I mentioned it. I could. I was so excited about that. I already mentioned it at the beginning of this part of the video, but showing you right there, and also more assets than liabilities. That is a plus, and definitely short term, way more. Long term, more, I'm double, you know, so that's great as well. So definitely exceeds that right there. That is what you like to see as well. Nice balance sheet right there. Debt level, debt free, reducing debt. Has not had, Fix has not had any debt for the past five years. Like this is, and therefore today, they don't need to be covered by operating cash flow. You don't have to worry about that. But although operating cash flow, and I'll show you the cash flow as well. And as far as management, they have two female founders who started the company. I believe that was the first ever that's happened in a public company or everything. So they definitely set off some things when they went public and everything. It was definitely like a big thing. And this stock has moved around for sure. And I'm gonna get to that. And let's check out their website here. And Figs doesn't just sell scrubs. They've been diversifying their products for sure. They've been getting to, as you see right there, shoes. They've been getting into, you know, jackets and loungewear. And they got lab coats and vests and different things like that. And I've been seeing this brand more and more and more. I work in the healthcare space. You know, I do have a degree in finance, which I graduated with that during a time where it wasn't a great time to graduate with a degree in finance. But I do use that degree, obviously, you know, with this channel and my research and education and my, you know, all that. So yeah, I do have a finance degree, minor in economics, but I do work in the healthcare space. And I see this brand more and more. I would say like probably... I don't go around looking at people's scrubs all day, but it's just something you notice. And I hear people talking about this. Let me tell you, the excitement behind fig scrubs sometimes, it's like, you know how people line up to get, you know, certain shoes or, or a video game release or something like that? Figs, like, has, like, certain, like, of course, they have certain styles, but they have certain colors that aren't available all the time. And so they have, like, announcements that come out, and they'll do, like, little teasers and stuff, and people, like, seriously get excited about it. And, I mean, I get it. You know, if you want that color and you've been waiting on it, and then, boom, it's there. They got your size, you know, order, you know. So, yeah, there's excitement around this company as well with their scrubs. And let me tell you personally, I have a pair of these, and they are very comfortable. Like, seriously, the material is very nice, and they fit very well. So, I get it. They are, I won't say necessarily, I thought they were on a pricier range when I was shopping for them myself. But then I was comparing against the scrubs I bought before, you know, on Amazon. It wasn't like Amazon brand. Stuff. It was some, I think it was another brand, uh, Cherokee or some other brand. And it wasn't that big of a price difference. And, of course, Figs has sales sometimes as well. But... Look, as you see on the website right here, you know, different kind of products right there, jackets and vests, loungewear, and they got the socks, and they got the shoes going on, they got a partnership with New Balance, and so it's, yeah, it's barely a company that's diversifying their product, and the scrub, the healthcare space is rising and rising and growing and growing. Healthcare is not going away. You know, healthcare is not going anywhere. AI is definitely going to make healthcare more efficient in some areas, you know, in, in maybe surgical areas and medicine areas and, you know, research and development and things like that for sure. 
But when it comes down to like in the hospital, in the home health, you know, in the urgent cares and different places like this, I don't see how AI can replace a nurse or a doctor or pharmacist or pharmacy technician, respiratory therapist, radiologist, you know, like I I don't see how, you know, <laughs> what's, how that's going to happen. I'm sure it's going to be attempted if it hasn't been already. But like I'm just saying, like this is a clothing space that is growing and I don't see the need diminishing any time. And so they have definitely can take over some more market share for sure. But let's look at how the stock's been performing here. So yeah, lifetime performance, not good. It's definitely an ouch, down 76.34%. As you see, this stock went on a rampage right there. So yeah, started around 30 or so in May, 2021, and then went up to $50 a share right there around June 30th, 2021. And it's, you know, bounced down, went down back up, and it's been on a steady decline for the past couple years right here. And then started trading in single digits right here as you see like um recently right now at 808 so they're definitely down 52 range though they went down to five dollars and 55 cents there so they're approaching back up on the higher end of that you know towards the middle of that 52 week range and market cap of 1.39 billion so very small market cap right there very small company when it comes to market cap compared to like let's say for instance I mean, I know Nike's not in the scrub space, but I mean, that would definitely be a major competitor. Good grief. Nike, um, clothing area, market cap, $176 billion. So, you know, like, Fig's definitely smaller for sure. And I mean, that could be a takeover target. I'm not saying like, you know, it, it's just when I see companies that so massive, not in a space, and then I see a company doing so great in a space and they're just small, I'm like, if I was the other company, I want to get in that space, I would be like, I'm going to buy that company. And maybe not even change them, just buy them and have them. But me, Fig's may not want to be bought. I don't know. But so yeah, right here, you got earnings per share at 0.08. So PE ratio on the higher end for sure right there because their price to earnings is thrown off, like I said, just turned profitable. So they got time, you know, they keep growing like this and get their costs down to bring that down some for sure. And let's look at the financials because this is very exciting. So 2019, 110 million in revenue. Next year, 263 million. Year after that, 419 million. Year after that, 505 million. So that growth, 138%, 59%, 20%, very nice. Look at that gross profit started at 79.34 million in 2019. All the way up now to 354 million, 139%, 58%, 17%. Operating expenses, of course, expenses are going up right there for sure. And you got that net profit right there, 21.19 million in 2022. And gross margin, look at that margin right there, around 70% for the margin right there. Operating expenses around 60% right there. Net profit, look, I mean, so that's what I'm, I mean, let's look at the cash flow. Looks a little bit odd on here. You got some positives and some negatives of their operating cash flow and their investing cash flow. So they definitely still have some areas to work on for improvement for sure. Like I said, this is a newer company and you definitely wanna see that cash flow increasing and positive and going up and everything like that. And let's look at some of their investors in this company. 12.49%, we've got Bomco. Next up is 7.35%, the Vanguard Group, and then BlackRock, and then Fidelity, T. Rowe Price, you know, those big major companies, Franklin Templeton. So yeah, they've definitely got interest in the major companies, State Street, Morgan Stanley, Citadel Advisors, and Soros Fund. So yeah, you definitely see those big players, those big names in this space for sure that have pieces of this company, very small percentages of their portfolio, of course, because they have major portfolios, of course, but they own a good chunk of this. And recently... There was some insider buying and some insider selling. Insider trades right here. So recently, Heather Hassan sold some shares right here, around 7.83 right there, price per share, 34,000 shares, May 9th, and she is the executive chairman. But Catherine Spear, the CEO, chief executive officer, she recently bought some shares right there on March 7th at $6.32, 790,000. So yeah. So yeah, you have some sales right there by Heather Hassan, you know, 269,000, 484,000 right there, but Catherine Spears buying 4.98 million right there. That is showing some confidence right there. And if you think it's underpriced, like I said, when I was talking about earlier in the video, you know, insiders buy and sell for different reasons, sell for various reasons, various reasons, but usually only buy for a couple reasons. One main reason, I think the stock's gonna go up. I think it's undervalued. They wanna show strength in the company because they know what's going on underlying. And you got another insider buying right here. You don't have a lot in 2023. You got a lot of grants and everything right there. Some selling going on. And, but that was really nice when I saw the CEO buying right there a couple months ago. And I wish I would've went in right there at that price around $6 right there for sure. Let's see this analyst estimates right here. So yeah, moderate buy right here with the analyst estimates, 18 ratings, $8.50, only like 5% upside from where it's at now. Highest price target is $11. 
lowest five dollars and average 8.50 right there this is one like i said i would not have a major huge huge position in this one for sure i'm definitely going to start another position in this one soon but i'm just going to kind of grow it steadily not throw everything at it of course small small percentage of my portfolio but along with the other growth stocks analyst forecast of fixed ticker symbol figs got a moderate buy with 11 ratings seven buys two holes and two sales 12 month forecast target price of $8.50, around 5% upside right there. Highest price target of $11, lowest price target of $5. And that is it with number three on the list, FIGS, F-I-G-S. Let's jump on to number four. And number four is Tesla, ticker symbol T-S-L-A. Doesn't need much of an introduction. There's a great chance you know what Tesla is. There's a great chance you even know about how their stock has performed. Tesla designs, develops, manufactures, leases, and sells electric vehicles and energy generation and storage system in the United States, China, and internationally. Tesla is mostly, of course, a electric vehicle company. You know, some people say it's a tech company or it's an energy company, different things like that. They make most of their money right now from selling electric vehicles. That's where it's from. They're definitely growing in other areas, and they have a lot of opportunity to continue growing in other areas and in the electric vehicle space. They're number one when it comes to electric vehicles vehicles definitely in the united states so and they're just been grabbing market share grabbing market share i've been seeing so many more teslas on the road it is crazy in medium-sized cities in big cities you should be or just see teslas in big cities now i'm seeing them in medium-sized cities even more and more and right here snowflake analysis flawless balance sheet with high growth potential you like to see that for sure they don't pay a dividend not considered a value stock of course but growth stock yes with a nice balance sheet yes earnings are forecasted to grow 23.46 percent per year and earnings grew by 40.4 percent over the past year so definitely nice look at this future growth right here five out of six check marks on this website right here tesla is forecasted to grow earnings revenue by 23.5 percent and 19.6 percent earnings per share is expected to grow by 22 percent return on equity is forecasted to be 24.7 percent in three years so wow wow right there future growth prospects for sure nice with this company see the revenue forecasted going up see the earnings right here forecasted going up that is definitely nice against the industry close to the industry 23.5 percent versus 22.5 percent the electric vehicle space is growing and it's expected to keep growing as people you know there's a lot of people that don't have electric vehicles obviously and it's moving that way with these gas prices like this as well i mean me personally my next vehicle is going to be an electric vehicle like uh, these gas prices it costs me 40 50 dollars every time i go to the gas station that's every week like that's ridiculous like and i'm still going to probably keep the car i have as a gas car because i do like it it's a tuner car i won't get into all that but i like that you know space i like those kind of cars and everything the tuner cars the imports you know so yeah i'm going to keep this car and everything that i've tried to hopefully keep it or be i still have a car like that but electric vehicles for sure lower maintenance no gas prices yeah you got the energy cost with electricity but the low maintenance and the gas that's that's just really attractive to me and i know it is really attractive to other people as well so yeah analyst earnings analyst prospect right there so analyst growth forecast 14.9 percent for the market and then you have the revenue right there tesla at the top 19.6 percent for this company 18 percent industry 7.8 percent in the market so yeah earnings versus saving rate nice earnings versus market high growth earnings revenue versus market and right here, they're saying that the only little X right here, high growth revenue is that Tesla's revenue is forecasted to grow slower to 20% per year, but that's 19.6% per year, right underneath that. And it's still higher than what they're forecasting for the industry in the market in general. And financial health, look at that right there. Very nice. Six out of six checks right here. Tesla has a total shareholder equity of 49.2 billion, total debt of 1.8 billion, which brings its debt to equity ratio of 3.6%. Very nice. Its total assets and liabilities are 86.8 billion and 37.6 billion. Nice as well, right there. So as you see right there, short-term assets and long-term assets, much more than the liabilities. That is awesome. Great to see for sure. Let's check out the website here. Yes, you know Tesla. You see Tesla, the Model S, the Model 3, the Model X, the Model Y, the solar roof, the solar panels. So yeah, working on the Cybertruck, very exciting vehicle. There's a lot of demand for that. They've been working around with prices as well. I feel like they've been discounted prices, raising prices, trying to see what's working right here. So you like to see a company that is on top of what they're trying to do. You know, they're trying to, of course, hit sales marks, but they're also want to keep the margins nice and everything. And look at the vehicles, solar roof, everything, the accessories. A lot of demand for some of their products for sure. And but of course, you know the CEO, Elon Musk, is he's something else. It's genius, part genius, part something else, part alien, something from Mars, you know, whatever. But no, definitely an intriguing 
person to have in your company leading it. And definitely they would not be where they're at now without Elon Musk. Like somebody else may have, yeah, got it right here, but I couldn't imagine this company like getting where it's at with somebody else besides Elon, Elon Musk. Like definitely great CEO right there. And Tesla, as you see, Lifetime right here back in 2010. Look at that around a dollar share of course they've done splits stock splits and different things like that so this is you know considering all that in right there and back there when didn't you wish you would have bought it back there and just kind of i mean for a while though it was trading pretty low and an exponential growth for sure happened within the past five years right here as you see and this stock has been all over the place lately it's definitely i think year to date it is yes yeah, up 46.24 percent year to date but in the last three months down 13 percent last month up 10% last five days, up 6%. So you see it's kind of all over the place. On the 52 week range right there, it's approaching, you know, the middle about right there. So the 52 week range and 101 high range, 314 right there for the 52 week range is definitely a stock that's been moving around. I currently don't have a position in Tesla. I have before in the past. And it's definitely stock I want to get into more. I just really want it trading lower. Like I know like the PE ratio is only 52.8. And I say only because I think the last company I just talked about was around 100, but that's still a high PE ratio. Definitely not a value stock for sure. But so it's definitely on a higher end. Something I do wish came down. Same thing as with the previous company, Figs. I want that company to come down some more and I'll definitely jump into it. But that's the thing with growth stocks. It's not always, you don't really consider the price too much val um, based on valuation because the valuations, you can't really do that that much with a growth stock. With, you know, it's so, it's, it's kind of, it's not to say it's hard to evaluate a growth stock, it's different to evaluate a growth stock versus a value stock or income stock or something like that. So, yeah, let's check out the financials here. So, with the financials, you see this growth. It is nice right here. Look at that double digits right across the board right there. Now, I won't read all the numbers to you. You see them right there on the screen. We'll just jump back, you know, 2018, 21.46 billion growth right there was 82%. Now we're at 81.46 billion in 2022, 51% up from last year at 53.82 billion. Gross profit, look at that. I mean, it started right there in the millions, right there in 2015, billions, just doubling, just doing all kinds of just great growth, 105%, 54.32%. Yes. Of course, expenses right there going up. Net profit, look at that, at 12.58 billion right there, an increase 127% from last year. And very nice right there. Let's check out the cash flow. This is nice cash flow as well right there. We got the positive cash flow. 14.72 billion operating cash flow right there. Year before 14.5. The year before that 5.94. Year before that 2.41 billion. Nice increase of operating cash flow right there for sure. And major investors right here in Tesla at the top, the Vanguard Group with 6.69%, which is 1.0% of their portfolio, and BlackRock, State Street, Geo Capital Management, Capital World, Fidelity, JP Morgan Chase, T. Rowe Price, you know, big major names companies in this company right here. Of course, right here, Tesla is a major part of a lot of portfolios for sure and they've definitely been increasing in the past couple of years right here and with the company itself no insider buying lately got some insider selling back in may april around 162 dollars a share 152 a share you know 197 dollars a share 200 dollars a share musk kimball right there and so you know uh, kimball musk so yeah um so yeah you do have some selling not a lot but no buying it's a dynamic stock right here let's look at the analyst estimates it's a moderate buy right here with 30 ratings right here at a 202 dollars 84 cent 12 month forecast 12.60 percent upside potential right there lowest price target 115 dollars average price target with that 202 highest price target of 280 dollars right there and so yeah right here with tesla on tip ranks they have an outperform score of eight out of ten with hedge funds increasing their shares and also where you said insiders bought shares on the other website msn i didn't see that let me see something here i guess they had some buying one buy back in february 2023 um oh elon musk right there why was that not let's jump back over here for a second that is uh it's not showing up over here but it's showing up over there i do remember musk selling and do, i think i guess buying i do remember him selling some months ago but they're saying a none open oh none open market buy right here so yeah ten thousand 500 shares elon musk but so yeah not a lot of insider buying as you can see right here with this stock and that's just how it's been right here for tesla's notice that elon musk holds a large position in this company though and i'm of course sure he definitely wants it to do well and they actually recently um he recently had an interview and stated that they're going to be diving into some advertising which is different which is new for tesla right there because they don't do ads they don't do advertising so 
that could definitely lead to some more growth. That's definitely going to you know, be increasing expenses. Of course, you don't pay anything for much for ads, and you're going to start paying for ads. But if they see a return on equity, you know, if they see a nice return on what they're spending for ads, you know, it's leading to more growth, more revenue, then I'm sure they may increase that. Or they may say, oh, it's not worth it. So definitely need to see that they're going to at least try it. You know, at least they didn't just throw it out and say, no, nah, we don't need that, you know. But, you know, Musk says this, and he usually delivers on a lot of stuff. But he says some things he doesn't deliver on. So that's one of the, you know, dynamic things about him as a CEO and everything what people criticize him for sometimes but I see he's done a lot of great things for sure and also yeah recently um Elon Musk know, um, stated that there's going to be a new CEO taking over for Twitter. So a lot of people were happy about that, saying, oh, okay, he's going to have less attention going now. He's still going to be working on design and different products and things like that for Twitter, just not like the day-to-day -day business. You know, the part, he doesn't he doesn't like that much, that, that kind of stuff. He likes to, you know, the development, the design, the research, the different things like that with the products, not all the, you know, meetings and financials and this and that and all that. So he's putting, giving that to somebody else, which is not smart of him, of course, to do, and focusing on the other areas of that for Tesla. But people are happy with that because that means he also can devote more time to Tesla. But he also has SpaceX and Boring Company. And so, yeah, this man, I don't know how he does it, but much respect to him for doing all that he's done. But, yeah, so that is, people are saying that is going to lead to a bullish area right there with the post-Twitter era is what they're saying right there. So, yeah, that's what's going on with Tesla. And that is it with number four on my list, Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA. Let's get on to number five. Number five is Hems and Hers Health, ticker symbol Hems, H I M S. Hems and Hers operates a telehealth platform that connects consumers to licensed healthcare professionals, and they also sell products. And we'll go into the website and I'll show you and everything here. According to the Snowflake analysis for Hems, excellent balance sheet with reasonable growth potential. And they're stating right here on the Simply Wall Street, they're trading at 68.9% below their estimate of its fair value. And this stock has been growing this year. I'll show you the charts here soon. And the earnings are forecasted to grow 68.9%. 72 percent per year wow that is nice right there there is they say significant insider selling over the past three months we'll notate that let's look at the future growth prospects so future growth prospects four out of six of the check marks hymns and hers is forecasted to grow earnings and revenue by 68.7 percent and 18.9 percent earnings per share is expected to grow by 66.9 percent and return on equity is forecasted to be 10.8 percent in three years so nice growth right there nice growth for sure you see on the chart right there the revenue going up and you see the earnings right there going up not profitable yet in this company but they're estimated let's see it gets to be profitable but according to this chart right here 2025 so they've got a little ways to go for sure but they're definitely been going in the right direction for sure to get towards that profitability of course past performance not going to be much right here going on this is another newer company that just went public in the uh, stock market right here so they haven't been public for that long at all right here just a couple years and so not a lot of past performance to be judged on fall up right here Let's go to their financial health. Five out of six check marks right here because Hims has a total shareholder equity of $312.7 million and total debt of zero. Another growth stock with zero debt. Oh, it's, it's, it's just lovely. It, it's, it's odd. It's, it's like a... What do you call it? Anomaly almost in growth stocks to have zero debt because, you know, they, they have to spend so much and borrow so much to keep trying to grow and try to grow, especially if they're in a competitive space. And, you know, almost every space is competitive nowadays. You know, finance, healthcare, you know, um, electric vehicles, all these companies are in competitive spaces, but they're carving out their niche. They're doing things separately. You know, like there's no other Tesla. There, yeah, there's other cars that are doing people doing electric cars. You know, SoFi Bank, I don't think anybody's really doing it like they're doing it as far as like all in one app. Um, new, NU, you know, in Latin America, doing the growth they're doing, the products that they're providing, people are happy with the product overall. That's awesome. Figs, scrubs, you know, nice different kind of scrubs. I tell you, they're better than any other kind of scrubs I've had, and I hear that from other people. So, you, yeah, you got to be in a you're in a competitive space, but you have to do you, what you're doing and do it very well. That's the any that's the entrepreneurial lesson right there, you know. But anyways, so. And you just have some differences for sure to stand out to be different. You don't just do the same thing, carve a copy of something. Just do it, do it better. You know, everything's almost been done before, but you got to do it better. Do it different, you know, just do it. <laughs> but no, so yeah, financial position analysis right here. Short term assets are much more than short term and long term liabilities. That is awesome. What you want to see right there. Look at that exceeding 225 million in assets, 556 oh, million in liabilities. 150 million in long-term assets, 7.28 million in long-term liabilities. That is awesome right there. Very nice for Tesla. And 
Sorry, I went on a little tangent prior to that. <laughs> I, I do. I'm really trying. To, on these longer videos, I just let it kind of go sometimes. But, yeah, I, I'm still doing a lot of editing on this video. Believe me, these tangents have gone on longer. But you're just only hearing part of it because this is five top growth stocks. And I'll get into some honorable mentions at the end as well. But, yeah, so now let's go over here to their website here. So, yeah, here's a Hims and Hers website. As you see, they don't just do the connection with, you know, consumers to healthcare professionals. They do that for sure. But they have several products as well. Several products, you know, for ED, hair loss, anxiety and depression, skin care. So they're in the beauty sector as well and also in the healthcare sector. So that is, those are two growing sectors that have, you can have some nice margins in those sectors for sure as well. Healthcare and beauty products, like that's a great blend right there. You know, even in times of like recessions and depressions, people tend to spend money, you know, in trying to beautify, you know, making sure they look good and everything like that. Maybe it be just for themselves or for an interview, job, you know, whatever it is. But, and of course, health, health is important. You don't have your health, you don't have anything. They're in a very nice space right here and, you know, blending with the healthcare and in the beauty area right there. Definitely been growing their product line too, because I remember when I think Hims and Hers first really started getting noticed and everything. I think they were just like an ED and health um, e and hair loss. Then now, you know, they have like, you know, sleep gummies and wrinkle cream and, you know, all kind of other things right there. And, to, and of course, actual medications for Panadol, you know, and different medications they're into. And they're just growing in that and trying to grow online and in stores and everything like that. So they have definitely diversified their product line. I can see them continuing to do this. This is another one of those companies where look at this market cap, small market cap, $2.05 so definitely on the smaller range, I can see a company trying to pick them up, trying to get to that audience more. You know, maybe Hems Harris doesn't want to be bought out. I'm not saying buy the company because you think it's going to get bought out, but that can definitely increase the price for sure. But like sometimes when you're in a company, you want them just to keep growing on their own so they can really unlock their own potential and just get as big as they are. Because they get bought out, then they're going to get capped at a certain price. Like, oh, we're buying you out for $15 a share or something like that. You know, but where this company could go to $30 some dollars. I mean... It has been up to around, what was that, around, yeah, around 20 almost, it popped up. So yeah, there's another one of these companies that started around $10, popped up after 2020, you know, and everything went real high, you know, during after COVID and all that and everything, and then started going down single digits. It was trading around 4 or $5 for a while for sure. But look at this year to date, they're up 52% right here last three months one percent one month they're down ten percent like i said they jumped up and then went down for the whole year for one year 178 percent growth right here that was around when there was like three dollars or something to share yes but yeah lifetime right here they're down just one percent because they're almost they're around that ten dollar mark right there so let's jump over here to their financials so yeah not a lot of data right here just went public a couple years ago but you have growth 93 percent in the revenue year over year up to 526 million dollars right here gross profit going up right there doubling and you have the net profit you know going in the right direction you know less negative you know so yeah we're gonna, we'll get to positive hopefully and that's definitely what they want to achieve nice margins right here look at the gross margins 70 percent percent 75 percent so just in case you don't know gross margin is revenue minus cost of goods sold so you want to see that on the higher end for sure so 75 77 percent very nice right there and analyst average target price right there 12 months is $12.70. So that's 29.9% upside right there. Lowest price target of $9, highest price target of $18. So you have 10 ratings right here, five buys and five holds, zero sales. And on the tip ranks score right here, they have a seven out of 10 as far as the growth neutral. They have hedge funds decreasing. They have some insider selling going on. So definitely something to watch. You know, a lot of people are you know taking profits and doing things like that because that recent run up for sure i mean look at that so yeah if you bought around three four five dollars you know here right here and it ran up to double digits 11 10 12 right there i'm sure i mean that's a that's great gains right there 100 percent and more right there gains right there being on where you bought it at so yeah you, i understand thinking profit so yeah some people are definitely doing that this is a stock i've been in and out of i definitely got in on a lower time sometimes i got in too high sometimes and was trying to trade it i should just help because honestly i would be uh, oh yeah, I think I'll be up right now. But so yeah, this is one I'm definitely want to get back into, and I'm not really sure the price target. I'm not doing a valuation, you know, model or anything on here on this video. But it's definitely one I want to start a position on soon. Definitely under ten dollars. Like I may start one here around nine something just to kind of get in and then of course if it goes down to seven go in more if it goes down to five or something go in even more you know i'm not gonna say i'm gonna ride this to zero but like they're definitely it could go down more and i would still consider this a buy for me personally so yeah this is what i'm definitely looking at to get back into for sure insider selling or buying you have melissa baird who is let's see what is she in the company oh chief operating officer coo 
I was doing some selling around the double digits of 10 back in May. There's some non-disclosure stuff right there. But I believe, let's see, I'm trying to think the last time I remember their CEO buying heavily in the single digits. When was that? Maybe that was longer ago. Okay, so yeah, it's been a while for sure. This is another website I like to use, Market Beat right here. And a lot of selling, you see. Okay, some buying back in 2022. It's been a while, I guess, since he's bought. I guess it was 2021, I believe, is when the CEO, the founder, and co-founder were buying. So, yeah, it hasn't been recently. So, you know, it's something to kind of watch out for. You know, maybe I may even wait until I see that. You know, if the stock keeps going down, maybe I'll wait until I see some insider buying to see, like, okay, I feel a little bit more confident going in. But that's a growth stock, you know, definitely future growth is one thing I'm looking at, and that seems to be nice, definitely heading in the right direction for him and her. So definitely stock that's on my radar for sure that I don't currently own, but I do consider a top five growth stock for sure. And that is number five on the list, Hims and hers, ticker symbol H-I-M-S. Some honorable mentions, we'll say, um, for me right here as far as like growth stocks. STEM is a company that I'm looking at for sure. They are pretty much like AI and energy kind of mixed together. You know, STEM is a digitally connected intelligent energy storage provider. So they are mixing in like their AR platform, Athena, and also with like energy efficiency. Definitely a exciting space to be in right here. And newer company incorporated in 2018. This is one that almost made my top five list and I'm definitely keeping my eye on it. It's really trading very low right here. But you see this stock has been all over the place. It's, you know, lifetime is down 58%. So as well, it's up to $36, $34. Year to date is down 55%. It's definitely, you know, in a rough spot right here for sure. But it's definitely one that's on my radar right here. Forecast right here. 10 analysts forecasting, seven buys, two holds, one sale. You got $10.98, 177% upside for the average target price right here. Lowest target price of $4.80, highest target price of $20. So this one, you know, it's trading below the average, you know, target price, even the lowest on the target price right here, right now, currently trading at $3.96. So yeah, STEM, ticker symbol S-T-E-M, is one that's definitely on my list, almost made my top five. I would say this would be like number six, like, you know, like seriously, like this one could easily almost slide in. It came between like, I want to say for sure, but like number five on the list, hymns and hers, it came between STEM and him, but hymns has done more recently and I see better growth right here in them recently and a future growth. Then STEM, but let me, like I say, STEM is definitely one on my list for sure. And yeah, as you see right here, and it currently state, of course, according to this website, Simply Wall Street is trading at 35.7% below the estimate of the fair value and earnings are forecasted to grow 69.59% per year. So high growth potential and good value, according to the Snowflake analysis right here for STEM. So yeah, this is definitely one that I currently don't have a position in, but I'm I'm just a full disclosure. I'm about to start a position in STEM for sure. Like under four dollars a share right here now. I'm definitely looking at starting a position in them for sure sooner than later. Definitely. So that is one that definitely made the honorable mention. Another right here honorable mention that almost made the list right here is ChargePoint ticker symbol C H P T. And ChargePoint provides electrical vehicle charging networks and charging solutions in the United States and internationally. They are one that are definitely in a hot space, that EV space, and you know you got to charge the EV. So they are one of the bigger players in that, one of the bigger companies in the charging space right here for sure is ChargePoint. You've likely seen their chargers around, especially if you have an electric vehicle. According to the Snowflake analysis, excellent balance sheet and slightly overvalued right now currently though they're trading at 35.5 percent below their estimate of their fair value is what it's saying even on a snowflake analysis says slightly overvalued so a little couple different things going on there. that's simply wall street right here is what they're saying this and then snowflake saying that but the revenue is forecasted to grow 28.6 percent per year right there with charge point so this is one that's definitely on my radar i don't currently own but i'm thinking about owning so yeah, as you see, another one of these companies that started around that $10 mark, you know, the SPACs that was going on, it's so hot, that, that space was so hot, you know, you were just throwing $10 at a company for share, pretty much, and it was just jumping up like crazy. People were making a lot of money on SPACs, you know, for a while there during the, that 2020 era and everything and everything, 2021. So yeah, that's one of the companies that went up all the way up there, $40 a share around, and now it's trading at single digits. So yeah, down lifetime, 18% because it's approaching that $10 mark, but like, for example, uh, five year, down 19%, three year down 19%, one year down 28%, year to date down 16%. So yes, yeah, definitely down for sure. But analyst expectations, future growth right here. Let me see, pull this up. I believe it's almost. So yeah, according to analysts, it's a moderate buy. You got six buys and four holds out of 10 ratings. 
Got a $15.38 target 12 month right there. So a 93% upside right there. Highest price target, $26 lowest price target of ten dollars so currently trading below the lowest price target right there is charge point right here so definitely one that is on the honorable mention for my top five growth stocks for sure is charge point definitely one i'm considering looking into more seven out of ten on the tip ranks rating right there hedge funds have been increasing got some insider selling this is more than buying going on right there and so yeah that's what i almost made the list and a couple other honorable mentions i'll just go over real quick you've heard of these companies there's a ton of data and research and news out there for them amazon is definitely one now these big companies like these major market cap companies you know 1.19 trillion dollar market cap you know the triple digit growth days are i won't say over because it could happen again you know double digits is even hard to get sometimes with these companies sometimes you just get a single digit growth and everything but you get double digit growth sometimes as well with these mega companies like this so amazon is one of them i consider in an honorable mention for sure and also google Alphabet is another honorable mention of a growth stock right here. You know, it is, it is, these are mega, I mean, market cap 1.56 trillion. It's just, these are really big companies right here and they are growing. You know, I mean, like sometimes they have some hiccups as well, but you know, they have the market share and they're grabbing market share and they're growing in certain areas. They're diversifying products as well. And also who else? Microsoft, of course, ticker symbol MSFT. Another one for the honorable mention for sure. And this company has been on a tear this year today. Look at that chart wow for sure so yeah they're another one for sure honorable mention microsoft and also apple apple has been they're they're all-time highs right now i believe aren't they i feel like or 52 week high they're right around the 52 for sure 176 175 year to date look at that just wonderful growth right here max i mean come on i mean like come on so yeah those behemoth mega companies don't think i forgot about them they're honorable mentions gotta give them you know respect and shout out to them as companies that i do own um i own a lot of apple for sure uh microsoft and not currently in amazon um do want to get into amazon for sure i should have got in when it was under 100 for sure that's one area i was looking at on the chart where i was like Ugh. but i do own these stocks all of them in etfs because i'm in various etfs as well and these are usually some of the top stocks in etfs are some of the top stocks in etfs are typically you know apple microsoft tesla amazon you know google alphabet so things like that so i definitely own them in those areas as well but and google's one i'm looking into getting into is more as well so that's another one and of course facebook facebook is on it facebook has been on a tear this year when it was trading around under a hundred dollars a share and stuff i was buying some of this facebook when it was getting hit what was that last year for sure around this area and and i so i took them yeah i took profits too soon <laughs> but should have uh definitely uh held on to this one longer but look at that chart wow so yeah definitely one of the stocks that they could continue growing nicely for sure facebook meta platform i can still call it facebook meta platforms ticker ticker simple meta so yeah that's another one but those are just some more honorable mentions there. I can go on and on with some other ones for sure. You got AMD, you got NVIDIA. NVIDIA has always been on a tear, but I mean, it could still go on a tear, but AMD is definitely looking nice. Um, PayPal is looking like it could be nice. It's, tr it's just hitting the low, but could be going back into course in another space with nice growth. You got other companies like that for sure. You got some AI companies that are looking nice. You got CRISPR Health. You got, so it's just a ton of nice growth stocks out there to look at. We like do more research on for sure, but I'm going to wrap up this video because I could go on and on. And so, yeah, that is it, everybody with my top five growth stocks for long-term gains for 2023 and beyond 2024 2025 2030 beyond but yeah anyways though so that's it everybody hope you all enjoyed the video take care